just amazing how things can change literally an hour ago we couldn't even see the end of this spit here the sun's come out burst all of that mist away and now we're basking in glorious sunshine look at that absolutely stunning isn't it We left the last video at the house of Matthias in Villarreal. The next leg of this N2 trip is another short drive, 40 minutes from Villarreal down towards the River Douro. And the roads on this section of the trip do get a little bit more interesting as we enter the Douro Valley. But first a quick stop in Santa Marta to pick up another stamp in our passport. So there are many places that you can get your passport stamped along the N2 route and they include police stations, the fire brigade, the local tourist office, as well as all the historic places that you might want to visit. We're here in Santa Marta. I'm just going to show you one of the new airs they've got here, which is a perfect example of what they're providing Europe. I've been feeling so small Watch the clock ticking off the wall So we've literally only come about three minutes outside of the town of Santa Marta and there's this brand new air being made here up in the mountains overlooking the vineyards. Super smooth tarmac, hard standing, individually marked bays. Each one has its own electric and water. There's about six marked bays here with picnic facilities and then just check out this view. <laughs> Yeah, it don't get much better than that, does it, eh? <laughs> Each of the bays has their own waste point, a water and electric point. It is on a meter. You will have to pay for the services, but I should imagine like all of Portugal, that won't be very expensive. Lovely seating area here. Have your lunch overlooking the valley. So we came down from Villarreal yesterday down to Regua on, right on the banks of the Douro River here in the Douro Valley which is obviously famous it's where they grow all of the grapes to make port and if you continue down the Douro River all the way to the coast you'll come to Porto where most of the vineyards store all their port wine and they've got all their cellars there in Porto really interesting place to visit we've been there a couple of times previously and then if you continue back up the river up the Douro Valley absolutely stunning the whole area is a world heritage site you all the vineyards are terraced into the hillside it's really super beautiful yeah I can't describe it you've got to come and see it for yourself so we're going to take a little trip off the N2 back up the Douro River we're going to uh, do the uh, road that runs alongside the river. It's a really scenic route. And then find a little spot to have some lunch. So we're just going to stroll along the river here, back up into the town. We're going to visit the uh, tourist information centre and make sure that we get our N2 stamp in our passport to say that we've been here and then it's on to the next place. Bom dia. Bom dia. 
do que eu uh, gostaria de deste chão, que é assim, olha. Ah, é? Um, Ocupa tudo. Oh. Thank you. Grande. Yeah. <laughs> ah, obrigado. Obrigada. The road that we're going to take along the Douro River is another famous road called the N Treble Two. It connects Villanova de Gaia to Villanova de Fosgal, with a total of 226 kilometers in the heart of the Douro wine region. However, the 27 kilometer stretch between Peso de Regua and Pinau is undoubtedly the cherry on top of the cake. As it swirls through the amazing landscapes, it was once considered the best road in the world to drive. driven about 16 kilometers along the N222 down to a little place, a little village here called Pinau and uh, we're going to stop here for a spot of lunch. The River Douro actually splits here and uh, continues on down the valley that way and also underneath the railway bridge there it also continues that way so but we're just going to use this as a lunchtime stop turn around and then head back to our N2 route and then further down Portugal this afternoon. We sat in a lovely restaurant right by the river and we had the meal of the day which consisted of pork cooked in onions and what better way to spend lunch than watching the cruise ship sail by. So we're just packing the van up, we're about to leave Regua today and we're heading further down the N2 to a little town called Lamego. We'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get going. But before we leave I just thought it'd be worth mentioning that little trip that we did yesterday down the Douro Valley, um, down to Pinau. You can actually do that on the other side of the river as a really beautiful scenic railway. And uh, you can get the station here at Regua, you can get the train all the way down to Pinau and beyond all the way down the Douro Valley and it's probably one of the most scenic railway routes in the world. You can also get the train from here back into Porto as well so it's a handy little stopover if you wanted to leave the motorhome here in quite a safe place amongst others and then get the train all the way down into Porto and back and again probably a really scenic route all the way down there so it gives you a couple of options to do other than traveling around in your van from here in Regua. Okay, so let's get back into the van and let's carry on down the end too. So we're heading down to a town called Lamego. It's the next stop on the N2 passport. If you look at each of the pages, they cover each of the regions. So it's only a short trip. Um, I'll put the little map up on the screen here now and you can see how far it is down the N2. And nice little windy roads in and out of all the vineyards here. I imagine if you was to go straight on the main road, it would take you a third of the time. But that's not the point. You know, you want to see all this nice scenery and uh, it's a bit more of an interesting route. 
And the thing that's uh, struck our attention in Lamego that we're going to go and have a look at is uh, an old Baroque chapel or temple. Originally the chapel was built on this site in about the 12th century but then that was demolished and the chapel that stands there today was actually built in the 18th century. Now it's a very beautiful building in its own right but the other thing that stands out more so is the staircase that leads up to the chapel from the car park in the town um, and we'll show you when we get there. I think it's something like 686 steps from the car park up to the chapel so yeah be an interesting one see how fit you are <laughs> to get up there just one second and negotiate this bend <laughs> and we're not far away actually from passing the 100 kilometer mark on this n2 route from Chavez 700 odd kilometers in total I think we're just about to pass the 100 kilometer mark now. It was back there. It's back there. Who just said? <laughs> There's a huge car park by the sports center and the swimming pool here, right at the base of the steps up to the chapel. We've just parked the van there. This should be nice and secure here. There's a couple of other vans parked in here already and uh, I was told that they do run some tuk-tuks up to the top of the chapel, up the little road here, but that may be in the height of the season because not seeing many tuk-tuks in the car park here. Yeah, okay, we might have to climb the stairs after all. No. Well, uh, I can't see any tuk-tuks around here. We're at the base of the steps up to the chapel. Are you ready for 686 steps? Um, no, not really, but <laughs> as there's no tuk-tuks, let's give it a go. Definitely not the fittest person in the world, but I'm sure we can manage. <laughs> it doesn't look that far from here though, does it? It's only just there. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, give, <laughs> let's give it a go. <laughs> There we go, that wasn't too bad, was it? No, we have only done the first two flights, so if you look, <laughs> yeah. you cheat up. <laughs> We've only just come up from down there. <laughs> oh, another 670 to go. <laughs> Not too bad. I think we've done about five of the main flights so far. There's probably over 50 or 60 steps per flight. So I can see the top. We don't look that far away, but it's deceiving and it's getting warm now. Breaking into a little bit of a sweat, a little bit of heavy breathing, but we'll get there. It's all good exercise. What we need after sitting on our butts for so long and not doing anything. But the view from up here is absolutely stunning, look. Ah, you can hear the chapel bells. That means we're getting close. All right, I'll race you to the top, Lou.
684, 685, 686, 687. No, they lied. There's one more step. <laughs> we made it. Wow, look at this. That was worth the climb. Let me show you. Now you can go into the chapel if there's no ceremonies going on to have a look around it is free to go in there obviously with respect we're not allowed to film or take any photographs in there but you'll have to come up for yourself and have a look because it's absolutely stunning in there the gold carving at the back of the altar is absolutely incredible and the plaster ceiling looks like porcelain it's just absolutely amazing so well worth a visit and well worth the steps to get up here in the first place and of course when you visit the chapel make sure you go into the little souvenir shop here and they'll very kindly stamp your passport for you oh sorry <laughs> look at that nice little stamp there look hello there's a road in the car park right here we could have brought a van up here instead of climbing up them stairs now all joking aside if you physically can't make all those steps or you know you have a disability you can actually drive right up to the top there is a big car park here and there is wheelchair access right into the chapel so yeah don't be worried there's access for everybody you got the keys for the van haven't you babe yes i have all right i'll wait up here you go and get the van all right okay like the only time i'm allowed to drive it <laughs> <laughs> hey the walk down should be easy oh, you reckon hey all easier right. here we go 686 steps back down to the car park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely easier on the way down. Isn't it? Not even breaking into a slightest bit of uh, puff. <laughs> Plus you get the terrific view as you're going down as well. So we made it. We made it all the way up and all the way down <laughs> under our own steam. So I think we deserve a little bit of a tree. Nice little Portuguese tart. And a cheeky little drink. Cheers, Pam. Oh, needed that. <laughs> Another place that was highly recommended by the tourist office here is the cathedral in Lamego, just behind me here. Really impressive building. Uh, it's free to go in there and uh, yeah well worth a visit and a look around if you're here morning guys right well we've uh, made it down as far as Viseu on the N2 which is roughly about 170 kilometers or thereabouts taking us about a week to get down there so yeah pretty steady really nothing too rushed I didn't want this trip to be one where I felt we were doing hundreds of miles every day we wanted to do a little bit more of a relaxed trip so we're taking our time a little bit more than normal and uh, yeah we've come away from the N2 just for a few days again along the same theme of just chilling out for a few days so 
obviously I need to start editing some of these videos for you guys to get them out um, so I'm going to do that as well but obviously we could just stay at one of our favourite markups that we've been to a few times before chill out for a couple of days maybe meet up with some friends and I can also get some editing done at the same time and just relax and enjoy the holiday you know because at the end of the day that's what it is so um, we're heading to the coast to a lovely little place that we stayed at before we're going to do some laundry on the way and uh, I'll show you where we are when we get there so we're just outside of Aero and uh, just right near the coast and we've uh, found a speed queen to do our laundry in we like to search these ones out because they've always got the newest and the cleanest machines. These ones have even got a uh, touch screen. You can change the language, obviously, to English. Yeah, and they're very reasonable. It's only about 480 for a wash here. And from this location, I can still see the van parked right down there so I can keep an eye on it. Perfect. Bit of washing and then. Head off to the beach. If you're going to be out in Europe for any length of time, it's worth considering getting one of these discount cards for the Speed Queen as well. It only costs three euros. It saves you one euro per wash. So you only have to do more than three washes and you've already got your money back. And then after that, you're saving. It also saves you about 20 cents per 10 minutes on a dry as well. So if you're doing a wash and a dry half an hour, one and a half euros, you're going to save every time you go. So two times you've been to the wash, the laundry, this card's paid for itself and then after that you're quids in. The other thing we like about a lot of these Speed Queens is they have a washing machine dedicated for pets and a dryer also. So obviously people that have been in before hopefully will use that and not use the normal machines and keep them a bit cleaner. Hi guys, right, tonight we're going to do a speciality. It's a, a dish which is sort of famous for this region in Portugal. It's a dish called Francesinha, and we've had it before when we stayed with Roy and Maria. Uh, they kindly made it for us. Roy's challenged me to make them a Francesinha today. So here I am in the apron. <laughs> and uh, let me just run through the ingredients because basically what it is, it's a, it's a, a multi-layered meat and cheese toasted sandwich but there's a, lo a lot that goes into it. So uh, let me show you some of the things that we're gonna put in it. So the main meat is a beautiful steak here. And uh, we've just put a little bit of salt on the steak. We've also got two different kinds of sausage here that we're gonna cook. The, there's also some ham that goes into, this is a smoked ham. And we've also got some regular ham here. 
and then there is also some chorizo sausage so we've got one two three four five six different types of meat that go into the sandwich and then as well as that lots and lots of cheese each layer in the sandwich gets cheese then there's more cheese that goes on the top when it goes in the oven obviously lots of bread that we're going to toast first to make the sandwich and then one final thing is this special sauce the francesinha sauce it's primarily tomato peppers uh, it's got beer in it and it's cooked for a long long time and then when the sandwich is made the sauce is poured all over the hot sandwich and sometimes if you have it in a restaurant you might get a fried egg on the top sometimes that's had yeah so yeah and there's all the ingredients and uh, now we're going to start frying the steak and cooking the sausages then we will assemble the sandwich and then the whole thing goes in the oven all the cheese melts um, and then we pour the sauce on last you can hear our in this version. This one here? Yeah. yeah. Oh. When the blood starting, it's already. Oh, yeah. This one? Or not? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can turn it. It is. Mm. Yeah, one, Every two hot? sausages of those. One by each, one next to the other. Okay, you can put the next. Uh, in. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And then like this. Uh -huh. Then you can put it in as a, another one of cheese. Another cheese. Okay. Ah. Then okay. you can put the beef. Chorizo and cheese. Chorizo. Yeah. And two. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, huh? yeah, yeah Is it yeah, enough? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Pois. Não. É só é só assim. É só assim. Dois por. Por por dois cada um. Dá para três. This is better. This is better. And cheese. Okay. So now we've assembled the sandwich with all the different layers of meat and cheese with cheese on top of the toasted sandwich as well. Now we're going to pop these in the oven for all that cheese to melt through all the different meats. Later on, if you want more. Uh -huh. There we go. Francis Senior, cooked by me, <laughs> with some help with my friends. And nothing goes better than this and a nice cold beer. Cheers. <laughs> now, that was a pretty amazing sandwich. It was absolutely huge. I haven't managed to finish all of mine too much. Lou's done really well. She's only got a tiny little bit left. But Roy, the champion, clean plate. <laughs> How do you do it, Roy? Where do you put it all? <laughs> Somewhere around here. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. So our trip to Portugal would not be complete without coming here to visit the Luna Bar. This is probably our third or fourth time we've been to the Luna Bar. We visited here every time that we come to Portugal. It's such a cool place with such a cool vibe. There's a beautiful beach park up just behind. They've improved the facilities no end, but it's still really reasonable to stay here. And the weather's not great today. I mean, it's still in the mid twenties. As you can see, I'm still wearing a t-shirt. It's still warm, but the sea mist is rolling in today. So we can't really show you the sea, but let me give you a quick trip round the new and improved Luna Bar.
really like how they've constructed the new Luna Bar with these two-way mirrors here. From the inside, it looks like the best TV that you've ever put inside your place. The view is just fantastic. But from the outside, it reflects the background. So it really blends in with the surroundings here. And uh, yeah, it hasn't made too much of an impact on the environment here, which is great. And, uh, it's one of my favorite places to come. I highly recommend you come down to the Luna Bar. Stay here at Vegas Splash. It's really super, super cheap. And the facilities are great. They've really improved it here. Just a lovely place to be. Chill out and listen to the sea crashing in on the beach. Don't get better than that. Just amazing how things can change. Literally an hour ago, we couldn't even see the end of this spit here. The sun's come out, burst all of that mist away, and now we're basking in glorious sunshine. Look at that. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? And still to come on this trip down the N2 in Portugal, we get a visit from the local GNR on a stunning beach park up. We stumble across this amazing dam where we find two guys free climbing up the rock face and finish up parked up in the top of the mountains high above the clouds. So make sure that you subscribe because you won't want to miss the next episodes. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.